hello guys we are back again with the blue prism tutorial session 2 so today we are going to see what is robotic process automation and we would also see what does it mean and what tools are available in the market and how does the blue prism tool looks like so uh, let's get started uh, now uh, what basically is robotic process automation we are all aware of automation you know automation are basically a sequence of steps which can be performed uh, using any coding language uh, let, let's say cell scripting or c sharp anything and those sequence of steps which you have written if it does not require any hum human interference then it is called as automation you can take uh, an example of you know macros so those are also automation right now we break we, we already broke this part into three portions right robotic process and automation so we know what is automation now uh, when we talk about the process what is the process any sequence of meaningful steps which combined make up a process now let's take an example you book train tickets so you have to log into IRCTC website or app that is one step second step is you search for uh, that particular train uh, for your journey third step is you book it fourth step is you put uh, your, your key in your credit card or debit card credentials and fifth step is you uh, print the ticket which has been generated so all these meaningful logical steps when com combined together make up a process so automating this particular process will be termed as process automation now what is robotic this is a fancy word right robotic uh, robotic process automation you know it deals with process automation but uh, which will be done via a software uh, we term it as robot uh, it will mimic the human user that means whatever a human user does and the method which is used by the human user to do a particular task that will be mimicked by the software itself so uh, in our example uh, booking a rctc railway ticket so how how a human does he basically op uh, opens a web browser then he uh, clicks on uh, the address bar he keys in the uh, irctc.co.in then he keys in the username in username field then he keys in his password in the password field then he clicks on sign in and so on so robotic process automation will also do the exact same way as the human would do uh, would accomplish that task so uh, you know automation normal automation process automation sequence of steps when logically combined make up uh, a meaningful process to automate that process becomes process automation now doing it in a robotic way that is mimicking a human user is known as robotic process automation coming back so uh, why rp and why not traditional automation you know what is the difference between these two things rpa and traditional automation you know when we talk of traditional automation let's think of uh, any example let's say you want to do the same irctc ticket booking through traditional automation so what would you require just think of it first you would have to choose the language in which you will code everything uh, let's say you selected uh, c sharp or you selected shell script any any language so first is choice of language you will have a fixed language to choose from for traditional automation second you need to have in-depth coding knowledge on that language so that you would be able to automate that task right you need to have all the function knowledge all the you know uh, whatever tags are used whatever uh, uh, functions are there whatever libraries are there all those things you have to take care and then only you can code uh, using traditional automation now third ease of usage and or debugging let's say uh, you did a automation and tomorrow you left the organization 
so some new guy comes in and he faces an issue while running that code so you know to understand that code that guy is required to have knowledge of the that particular language which you have used for your coding purpose right so to debug or to use that script also the guy has to know at least the basics of the language which you choose for your coding correct when we talk of rpa there is no such choice of language because everything is graphical mostly uh, no coding is required no coding knowledge is required rather i would say now uh, if you have coding knowledge that that makes life easier but yes for starting up with rpa or for doing your normal tasks you don't require any coding language uh, just basics are enough if you are able to write algorithms on your own you would be able to work on rpa ease of usage obviously any 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 person can say that you know if you have a black screen and you have to write piece of code that is more difficult than working on ui or working on graphical interface so we'll see that in a minute uh you know how graphical ui is used in rpa and how a person can do coding using rpa tools so it's it's very easy uh, for debugging also since it's graphical there is there are a lot of debugging options available in each of the rpa tools so you can simply uh, debug that code and it will highlight the errors where where error is coming from so we will we will also uh, get to know about that in our later videos integration techniques now this is one of the most important thing let's say you did that ircTC coding using cell scripting now to host that cell script you will require a server correct second you need to take care of all the integration points for ex uh, let's say you will you wrote that script now you ha your script is going to connect to ircTC website so that firewall that proxy everything needs to be opened vlan tagging should be done you know so uh, for printing printer should be connected from that server on which you have hosted your script so lot of integration points will be there and you as a developer also you would have to take care of those things to make sure your code works wherein when we talk of rpa rpa you know it it gets installed on a machine be it a laptop be it a desktop or be it any virtual machine now since if you remember we talked about as a human user does so let's say we install this rpa software on your particular laptop or desktop or virtual machine if you are able to access iscc website and take a print out of your ticket using your laptop or desktop or virtual machine rpa tool will be able to do that in the exact same manner as you can do right so basically any rpa tool sits on top of your it layer so you don't have to worry about complex it integrations you only have to worry about the logic the algorithm and the code which you are going to write make sense yeah now scalability again we will compare the same uh, example you did the same ircTC ticket booking and printing using uh, c sharp or cell scripting and you did it using your rpa so let's say you uh, did the code for one ticket booking now i want to have multiple users who are going to book tickets so obviously it will it will require a bit of modifications in your in the c sharp or cell scripting case right but in rpa case you don't have to worry about much it can be easily scalable in sense you know uh, you only have to add uh, bots that's it you don't have to worry about anything else so we will also talk about that when we move later in our tutorial and in later videos now coming to system requirements as we already discussed you will uh, in case of traditional automation you will require a dedicated server you will require integration points you will require port openings and so on so many things you will require but in rpa you will not require those 
because it does not require any integration as such now OCR and cognitive support you will not have in traditional automation uh, more about that later but in RPA you can you can get support for uh, OCR and cognitive we'll talk about this later in our tutorial now uh, you can see these are the five tools which are you know in market majorly there are several others as well you can google them through so you know blue prism and ui path those are the market leaders right now then automation anywhere is also a good challenger pega or open span is shaping up work fusion is very new but you know uh, it has cognitive abilities as well so i have heard of it that work fusion is going to be the next level of rpa so let's see uh, how it shapes up i personally have never worked on our work fusion though anyways so let's let's move forward because our tutorial concentrates on blue prism so we will talk about blue prism more now coming to the look and feel of the tool yeah here you go so this is how the tool looks like uh, this is the home page when you log into the tool you get this home page which shows some tiles you know workforce availability total automations queues volumes now largest database tables now these are all called tiles and this entire thing is a dashboard how did how did this thing come uh, to the home screen we will see that later in this video itself okay for now just know this is the home screen which contains the dashboard right now the next tab is studio tab this is the main tab where you will do the designing and you know modeling of your process which you are going to automate so since it is a blank installation right now you see here there are two options process and objects so blue prism basically works on concept of processes and objects uh, what are those we will see those uh, in our later videos as well when we go in detail about process and objects so for now just note down that studio is the portion wherein you will do all the uh, develop development work and all the modeling work now next tab is the control uh, this is the control room basically wherein uh, on the right side there are available resources so since this was a single standalone installation we can see only one system is there if you have the license for multiple uh, robots then you will have all your robots uh, basically you know uh, every system or every laptop or every desktop or every virtual machine is termed as a robot uh, here in blue prism so all your systems or all your resources will be listed over here when you have a multi tenancy license available with you now whatever process you build in studio once you publish those to control room those processes will be uh, available in available process section which you can you know assign to the resources to make a meaningful robot which will do the automation we will see that as well as you as we move forward in the training now control room is also very important because you know you can also schedule your processes using this schedules section in the left hand side so we will also see that in detail when we go further in our training so basically control room is for monitoring and control of your uh, robots or your processes which you assign on resources and scheduling a process then we have the dashboard so you remember in the home screen we saw a particular page so that is the page which came from this particular thing this dashboard so you can customize your dashboards which will have uh, all the statistics related to your blue prism installation you can customize your da uh, dashboard uh, you can add new dashboards create new dashboards you can add tiles to those tiles are again these individual boxes which are highlighted these are called tiles so all the available tiles you can see in tile library you can also create new tiles and uh, customize everything that you can see so you know more about that again later in the uh, tutorial so we'll see that as well coming to the releases 
this portion is looking blank right now but it is just for you know version control of uh, your packages which you import to your blue prism installation or you export so you know it is basically for version control only then we have the system tab now this is primarily the settings tab wherein you can configure your uh, you can see your logs you can see your license uh, then you can see your uh, different logs and uh, how do you group different resources in pools uh, you, you can also set exposure you can import web services you can export your objects as web services so all those things will be done from this system tab and we will see those uh, very soon in our training so yep yeah, this is it about the tool uh, basically it contains home studio the designer section control for for your assigning the process to a resource dashboard for reporting graphical releases for version control and system for your settings so this is it about the tool guys uh, if you have any questions please put forward and i would try to answer them so drop your questions in the comment section if you like the video please like it and subscribe to the channel and help us move forward thank you guys thank you